set up, uh, specifically this one, of course. So uh, before we get started, though, if you like that intro, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Uh, of course, all that stuff is free and it helps me out a ton. If you want to support financially, there's also a subscribe start, which is basically just a pro to a Patreon. You get free content every month and just some extra additional stuff, giveaways, that sort of thing. Also, I should be having uh, all of my plates restocked as well as some additional new stuff on the website when this video goes live on Saturday. So hopefully all that stuff went well and I have that in stock as of this video. So if you need AR500 steel plates, go ahead and check that out. So this is of course a budget SPR build. I wanna say the price tag for everything included is around $1,000, which might sound a little expensive if you're just getting into it but for most people that's a fairly low-end rifle optic setup everything now i did test it out in a couple different configurations so you'll have seen it in a few different ways in the intro uh, let's go ahead and start off with the barrel length well before we get into that let's go into the reason why it's set up the way it is so i live in western washington it's very woody out here so basically, my philosophy for it, if you will, was from anywhere from zero to 300 yards. 300 yards is, generally speaking, fairly hard to come by in western Washington. It's very wooded, it's very overcast and rainy, and so long range isn't something that everyone has access to out here. And for my personal use case scenario, 300 yards is about the top end of what I would be shooting at. So, for this gun, this is set up to be a laser beam inside of 300 yards. So because of that, the barrel length that I went for uh, is 16 and a half inches. This is a Mercury Precision Barrel, which I believe is a rebranded uh, Ballistic Advantage. Don't quote me on that. It is 16 and a half inches, has a mid-length gas system, and it is a government profile. One in seven twist with a 5.56 chambering. So, 16 inch barrels, 16 and a half inch barrels give you really good ballistic performance without being overly long, like an 18 or a 20 inch. Uh, government profile isn't necessarily my favorite profile, but it is a fairly accurate profile. And again, not super heavy like a SOCOM or a heavy barrel would be. So for my intended use case inside of 300 yards, um, more than enough, I would say. Now, this realistically could be stretched out to six, 700 yards, no problem. The barrel with 77 grain uh, Sierra Match King uh, loadings is generally anywhere from one to one and a half MOA, five round groups, which is very, very good. So, that is the barrel. If you notice in the intro, we also ran it in a couple different uh, muzzle configurations. One was a brake, which on this sort of a setup with a mid length gas system that is tuned very, very nicely, it ejects. Uh, full power ammunition at around 3.30 to 4 o'clock. It is very, very well right. gassed. So with a muzzle brake on there, just makes it an absolute laser beam. I'll show you guys in-depth footage of all of this, but basically 300 yards on a reduced size target, you can just pull the trigger as fast as you can line up your sights and you're gonna be hitting that target all day. Uh, now, I also ran it suppressed. Uh, suppressed is um, something that will be advantageous, of course. There's less flash, there's less noise signature, uh, especially if you're running a big can like I am. It does add a lot of weight out front, but again, we're not dealing with a very heavy setup, so adding a little bit more weight out front isn't no, necessarily a deal breaker. But before we go any further, I do want to say that a company recently reached out to me, uh, K9, uh, K N I N E. They make magnetic solutions for really any sort of guns or accessories for holding that sort of thing. Uh, for more covert staging or even displays, they're very, very strong, can hold pistols and even rifles. And specifically this rifle that we're talking about today, as well as I mentioned, covert storage of basically any firearm. And yes, they do lock in with some authority. Now with the big rifle like this, I have it mounted off of the barrel nut and the BCG because those are the biggest parts of steel. Aluminum doesn't really work that way, so big steel. So even heavier guns like AR-10s that have even heavier um, bulk area groups, more steel, more steel barrel nuts, bigger barrels, that sort of thing, is gonna be even easier to mount even though they're heavier. So go ahead and check them out. They will be linked in the description. Now, I don't make any money off of it and they didn't pay me any money to say it. They did send them out for free and so I'm giving them a shout out accordingly. So we've already talked the barrel. So let's talk about the rest of the upper receiver. So uh, up front here, the handguard. This is a M-Lock 13 and a half inch handguard. It is a seven sided M-Lock. So it has it on all the positions all the way around. It is from AIM Sports. Now I've had some 
different experiences with AIM Sports. They have made some good products, some bad products. Uh, specifically with this one here, this is their Gen 2 rail, which is really, really good. So our mounting solution, is we have two locking nuts that clamp down onto the barrel nuts here on the bottom. And then we also have anti-rotation tabs on either side that fit very snugly against your AR-15 upper receiver. Uh, on top of that, another thing that I really like about it is that it is completely skeletonized up top. So you have lightning cuts all the way down the middle, as well as on the Picatinny slots themselves, they're mostly scalloped out to remove a lot of that weight. Now, some people really like to have matching handguard lengths with their barrel. So if they have a 16 inch barrel, they need to have a 16 inch handguard just for looks. For me personally, this means that the weight is situated further back. This is plenty long enough. If I was to attach a bipod or something else further out, uh, this gives me a ton of real estate to do whatever I want with. And again, seven slots seven sided m lock that is actually in spec now the only thing that i have mounted to my handguard is this utg this is a, an aluminum hand stop that i really like for some other spr builds depending on your use case scenario depending on where you are you probably want some sort of stabilization device some sort of bipod out front that will help you out however again in my circumstance 300 yards is basically the top end of where I'd be shooting at and you don't really need a bipod to take 300 yard shots and again that'd be the exception to the rule not the rule most of the time this is going to be in under 100 yards but again the design of this is to excel at those extended ranges though again my ranges are not that extended so the handguard works really really well I think these handguns are like a hundred bucks uh, which is a little expensive you can find them for cheaper when they go on sale for anywhere from like 60 to 75 bucks but uh, very very high quality get the gen 2 hand guards not the gen 1 hand guards and they are again very very high quality now moving back the upper receiver is a very standard upper receiver i'm looking for the forge marks on it i believe this one here is actually a palmetto state armory upper receiver which is one of my oldest upper receivers that i have uh, Fairly standard, just a Ford 7075 T6 upper receiver, nothing special whatsoever. Now, if we pop it out, we are using one of my oldest BCGs. This one here has approximately 6,000 rounds on it. This is a very standard uh, Bear Creek Arsenal bolt carrier group. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. The only things that I have done to it is replace the springs with spring co springs. I didn't have any issues before that, but I went ahead and did it just to kind of ensure or enhance the reliability a little bit and if you didn't already notice the charging handle is just a standard mill spec charging handle nothing special about that whatsoever so that is the upper receiver we have the uh, mercury precision which again I, is more of a rebranding it's not an actual brand 16 and a half inch barrel one and seven twist five five six it's about one to one and a half moe with good ammunition with an aim sports 13 and a half inch handguard which is m lock on seven sides and very skeletonized very lightweight standard upper receiver standard bolt carry group standard charging handle all very very simple all right so now let's go ahead and talk about the optic and you can't really talk about the optic without talking about the mount now I do want to say that this mount was actually sent out to me by Warren. They've sent me a couple mounts, both the Ramp 30, which is a 30 millimeter tube uh, with an offset red dot, which I'll show you guys some footage of, and also this one. This one, I believe, is their XL mount. It is a super high mount, so it is 193. Now, Warren is actually a local company to me. They're just a couple hours south of me. They make extremely high quality products, American made mounts for a very, very good price. Uh, well, I shouldn't say a great price. They are a little bit in the high end of scope mounts, not quite as high as like Geisley or Scaler or any of those guys, but their products are basically on par for again, about half as much money. This one runs about 120 to 150 bucks, depending on whether it or not it's on sale. And again, they did send both of these out to me. So uh, I do think it's an excellent amount uh, for a 193, which means that I can get right on the scope without much head movement whatsoever uh, versus if i had a 1.5 i have to duck my head down a little bit more now i'm not a very tall person but if you have a long giraffe style neck uh, then you might really appreciate and benefit a taller scope mount so there are other tall scope mounts you can even use like the utg half inch riser which i've used on a lot of different scopes uh, to push that optic up but i do like that this mount is super light super strong it actually has steel inserts 
uh, for your mounting screws on your optic and on your rail itself so that you never strip out the aluminum because aluminum, while very lightweight, is not particularly strong. So excellent mount. It ranges from anywhere from like 125 to 150 bucks. Uh, does a really, really good job. In my opinion, it's on par with any of the big boys like Scalar, um, Geisley, or any of those super expensive mounts that are anywhere from like 200 to $300 sometimes. Alrighty, so we've talked about the mount. It is, again, excellent mount, basically perfect. Uh, the Vortex Strike Eagle Gen 2 one date is the optic that we're running. 30 millimeter main tube, LPVO of course, one to eight power. Again, for my intended purpose of really excelling from anywhere from one to 300 yards, a one to eight fits that bill very, very nicely. Now, specifically on the Strike Eagle Gen 2, you have an integrated throw lever. On 1X, you have a massive 111 feet field of view. So you have a huge field of view. You also have a very bright reticle with a center dot and a sort of two-thirds donut of death, kind of like an EOTech. Uh, very, very good up close. One of my favorite optics, LPVOs anyways, to run up close. And on top of that, you can stretch this guy out to six, 700 yards. Now, the reticle in it is not perfect. It's not quite as good as like ACSS or any of those reticles that have really been proofed out to a million degrees. Uh, this one here, is good enough to get me first round impacts out to 550 yards on multiple different rifles. So for 5.56, the reticle works very, very well. Hit. Now again, in my intended use case scenario, out to 300 yards, I was able to, at 300 yards, make headshots uh, on a 4x4 four four inch target, which is just one away with just ball ammunition, using the reticle at 8x. Also able to hit mini knees, which is just a 7 by 12 inch target at 300 yards, not a particularly large target. Able to hit that all day with decent precision with the 1 to 8x. Now, again, having an 8x magnification isn't always about stretching out to extreme distances. Uh, it can be used even closer up, you know, 40, 50, 100 yards to positively identify a target or anything that you might be shooting at. Because, of course, if you can't see something, and see it in good enough detail, you probably shouldn't be shooting it. So now I'll show you some footage, but I did also run the Ramp 30 mount from Warren with the Monstrum Tactical G3 6-24X. And while that scope is really good for the money, and of course the mount is also excellent, it really didn't fit my use case scenario where most of my shooting is going to be inside of 100 yards with the ability to stretch out further. So having a big scope and an offset red dot, um, I'll probably put that in just us looking at it and laughing. Now, the issue that I had with that was, again, for my intended use case scenario of anywhere from, you know, 100 to 300 yards being my optimal ranges for the SPR, uh, that was too much scope. One, it was very heavy. It was about two pounds. Having the offset red dot built into the mount, very nice and very quick up close, but again, added a ton of weight. Whereas the 1 to 8 does everything, not maybe not quite as well, but it does everything in a much smaller, lighter package. And again, I can use the uh, XL extremely high mount of 193, which is very fast and very easy to get um, good eye relief and all that other sort of fun stuff on. So uh, a more high precision scope, something like 15 to 20 power on the high end, depending on your use case scenario, may be perfect. Because again, if you live, live in like Utah or Wyoming, where you might be shooting out to six, seven, or 100 yards regularly, then you might want something with a little bit more magnification to make those more precise shots. However, for me, again, anywhere from one to 300 yards, or well, one to eight X is great for uh, identification, as well as taking more precise shots than you can get with like, uh, a fixed four power or even just a red dot magnifier, a one to eight is gonna offer you a lot better capabilities at those extended distances. Alrighty, so we've talked about the upper in the optic. Now let's go ahead and talk about the lower. Now the lower, we don't have too much going on. The main thing going on with this right now is gonna be the trigger. So the trigger, if you might've noticed, is a straight, mostly straight trigger from POF. It is a drop-in single stage trigger that breaks at about four to four and a half pounds is what they say. But the great thing about it is when it has a really short reset, shorter than our average mil spec trigger, shorter by, you know, 20, 30%, something in that range. 
but it also has absolutely no take up on there if you guys can see that. So this is the trigger, it is just a hard wall. There is no take up, you build pressure until it breaks. There is zero take up whatsoever. So that means one, it is very, very easy to run it fast. Now, I don't particularly think it's any faster than running a mill spec trigger. Uh, maybe if you have a really bad trigger technique, it will cover up some of your mistakes. But for the most part, if you have the bad trigger technique, a good trigger isn't really gonna make you that much better. So I don't think in terms of total speed, it's really much faster than a mill spec trigger, but it breaks a lot cleaner and a lot more predictably than a mill spec trigger. So you don't have any of that take up, any of that creep, and it doesn't really roll through a wall. You just build pressure on it until it clicks again right at four, four and a half pounds. Really, really good trigger. Uh, it comes with anti-walk uh, anti pins as well, so it's locked into the lower receiver. The lower receiver itself is all standard mil spec stuff. It is a Palmetto State Armory lower receiver. Again, one of my oldest ones. The grip module that we're running, this is actually from Trinity Force. This is one of their new ones that's actually made in the USA. You can pick them up for anywhere from like eight bucks on sale all the way up to like 20 bucks depending on the price. It is a 17 degree angle, so it's fairly shallow on there, which means that it's very, very comfy. It's also short, it weighs like three ounces, hollow on the inside, good stippling. Um, no complaints about it, it is very, very light. On the back end here, well actually let's talk about the buffer setup. The buffer setup is just a standard carbine buffer and carbine spring. Generally, I run different uh, buffers and springs in the back because if I'm running like an overgassed upper or anything like that, However, this upper is so gently gassed, even with the suppressor on it, that I just run standard springs, and it runs very, very well. No problems there. On the back end, we have a mill spec tube, and we also have Trinity Forces, which they did send the grip and the stock out to me. This is their Cobra Mark II, which is a much improved version of the original one. Again, these are also made in the USA. You can pick them up for anywhere from like 30 to like 60 bucks. Very, very comfortable cheek weld. You have storage compartments for batteries. Uh, very comfy butt pad on the back with a large surface area. QD points on either side. So for you lefties out there, or depending on how you run your slings, could be really, really nice. Now, the only thing that we have not mentioned on this build is the sling. Now this is a Grove Tech Sentinel sling. Uh, quick adjustable, padded in the back. Very, very comfortable. Uh, I've used this on just about every gun that I own. I've been using it for quite some time. This one I did purchase with my own money. However, since then, they have contacted me and I believe they're gonna be sending me one in multicam. You can find them online for like 45 to 50 bucks and they come with the QD inserts that are uh, already installed so you don't have to do anything like that. So I'm running it off the right side of the buttstock, the Trinity Force Cobra Mark II. And on the front here, I have a Magpul QD insert for uh, Picatinny, so it's just sitting off the top and it's offset set right off of my LPVO. So very standard lower setup, a few really nice components. I like the grip, I like a shallower grip angle, really comfy stock that again is much lighter and much better than their first generation. Also both of them made in the USA now for a very, very good price. And the PSD resistance of the uh, lower is of course the trigger, which is very fast, very precise. Uh, I prefer single stage triggers to two stage triggers. And for me, four, four and a half pounds is still heavy enough to be very safe while also being very, very precise and allowing me to take longer shots with a little bit more precision. And of course, the Grove Tech Sentinel sling is just about the best sling on the market. I hope you guys can tell from all the shooting, shooting footage that I have put in that it is very, very fast, very flat. Um, and basically as fast as you can line up your sights and pull the trigger, even at 300 yards, it stays perfectly on target. This uh, barrel and upper receiver, the way it's set up, again, very, very basic, very simple. There's nothing very complex going on here, but because the barrel is so well gassed that it cycles basically everything, even cheap Tula, Wolf, that sort of thing, it will cycle everything. Um, and then when you put a suppressor on it, it will be fairly forward ejecting, like two o'clock, 130 to two o'clock, somewhere in that range for about a couple hundred rounds. And then after that, as I'll show you in the footage, it starts cycling at about 330 to four, uh, because of course, as more gunk gets built up with a suppressor with a lot of back pressure, like my Form 1 does have, um, you're gonna get a lot of that coming back into the system and slowing it down. So 
Uh, this upper has been 100% reliable and never had an issue with it whatsoever. Uh, again, for my intended use case scenario, this is basically a laser beam inside of 300 yards. Now, yes, you could do the same thing with a 10 and a half inch barrel uh, and really cut it down, maybe make it a little bit lighter. Uh, but for me, a 16 and a half inch barrel gives me not only the ballistic performance, but also the terminal effects that are going to be a little more effective than 10 and a half inch. 5.56 five, is a very velocity dependent round. So when you start off at like 2650 to 2700 on a 10 and a half inch barrel, you basically don't really have any room uh, to drop that velocity down and still create uh, massive wound channels, uh, rapid expansion, that sort of thing, fragmentation of the bullet. But when you start out with around 3,000, 3,000 to 3,100, somewhere in that range, depending on your loads, most of what I'm using is Hornady M193. Uh, so I'm getting pretty decent velocities out of a fairly hot round. Uh, and you're, you have a lot more ceiling in terms of how far you can drop down before you start to see less and less um, fragmentation and expansion of the bullet. So basically with 5.56, you wanna keep your FPS around 2,500 or above 2,500, I should say. Below that, it starts to become less and less effective and basically just start to punch holes and tumble in things, which is still effective, but not as effective as the massive expansion that 5.56 is capable of. So uh, that is basically everything in the video, guys. As I mentioned, I've done about everything with it. I really, really enjoy shooting it. Uh, it's incredibly fast, incredibly flat. Uh, even without a muzzle brake, just running a suppressor on it, it's very, very smooth shooting. And this is my setup for my specific situation. So again, let me know what you guys think of this down below. Comment uh, your thoughts, what I should have done differently, what you would change for your own builds. And uh, that's about it, guys. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed and got something out of it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace off.